Okay, this uh, video is about Wireframe CC. What you need to do is sign up for an account. So go to the upper right hand corner, click on the sign up. It'll take you to this screen. You need to put a username, an email, and a password. After you've done that, you can go back to the home page and you can log in. I'll go ahead and do that and I'll log in. Okay, at this point, you can import a wireframe from a free version. Okay, we're not gonna do that, but we're gonna create a new wireframe. You need to name it, and I'll just call it Art116, and I will create. Okay, at this point, I can make some edits. Okay, let's look at some of the tools at the top here in this kind of dark gray area. If I look right here and do a do the drop down, I can see that I can change the layout here. Right now the default is for web, and I can tell by the circles here. If I click here, those disappear. If I click back, I get the look and feel of a browser. I could also do a wireframe for an iPad and one for a phone. I'm gonna go back to one for a web browser. Okay, then this drop down will allow you to create another page if you want to. Okay, I'm going to skip over these ones. And then here I could add an annotation. Here I can export and share. And I'm going to skip over these ones for right now. I could change the settings. So I could come down here and change the width to something like. 1084, I could change the height to maybe 800. And I should see those changes take place. And then I could go to my dashboard. I'll skip that for right now. Okay, I could go into my page and I can start drawing out objects. And that's the first thing you have to do. So I'm just going to draw out, for an example, a long rectangle. When I do that, I need to come up here and choose what it's going to be. The options are a box, an image, I could add text, I could add a paragraph, I could do a line of text or just a line. Uh, I could create a slider, I could do a progress bar, a combo box, you're not gonna really need that, a horizontal scroll bar, which I don't think you're gonna need either, you could do a headline and you could do an input box and then you could add an annotation for notes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select a rectangle. And if I go inside, I can actually move it around. I can adjust the height. I could adjust the width. If I want another object, I'm gonna get this a little smaller. I can go in again and I can pull out another box. I have to decide what it's going to be. This time I'll just choose an ellipse. I really don't want an ellipse, but I could have one. If I don't want it, I just select it and I hit my delete key to get rid of it. I'll draw out another one and just show you some examples. So I'm gonna draw out another large rectangle and I am going to make it a box. Maybe I wanna put a box within a box. So first I have to kind of go off this area and draw out that box and I'm going to make this a paragraph. Now I could take that and I could move it into this area if I wanted to. I'm gonna come down here and draw out another and we'll try this time text. I could add some text. Again, if I don't want it, I can hit my delete key. I could change the width and the height. I'll just leave that for right now. I'm gonna draw out another rectangle. Let's look at some of the other options. I could make this an image by clicking here, and it gives me kind of just a rectangle with an X, which is gonna stand for an image. You can't really put real images in here. Again, I could move it around. I could place it up here if I wanted to. I'll go ahead and draw out another one. Let's try some of the other options. I could, I already did a paragraph. Actually, did I? Let me see. Okay, I did a paragraph up there. Let me delete that. Let me pull out another one. And this time I will do a list. I could have some list items. Let me come down here and pull out another rectangle. 
and let's do a combo box. Again, you're probably not going to need a combo box. Uh, it's not something we're going to be doing in Art 116. I'll just delete that. I'm going to pull out another one. Let's look at another option. So I did combo box. I could do a scroll bar. Not sure I would want a scroll bar, um, but you do have the option. You certainly could do one in this direction as well. Let me go ahead and delete that. Let's see if I can rotate anything. Doesn't look like you can do any rotation. Let me go ahead and delete that, pull out another object, and I've done scroll bar. I can make some headlines if I wanted to. Okay. And maybe that could even be my, my web links up here. I could do something like that. I'm going to come down here and pull out another one. And I did headlines. I could do an input area where potentially people could type in something here. You can't actually physically do that. Rather, it's just acting as a design element. I'm going to go ahead and pull one out again. And I could do an annotation. So I could just add some notes in here if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that. And maybe I'll complete kind of a footer area here. So I'm going to pull out another rectangle and make this a box. Okay. I'll pull out, again, you have to do it in kind of empty space. I'm going to pull out another one and make this text. I'm going to go ahead and grab this element. Move it down here, extend it, move that into the location I want it to be. I have a little bit of hard time grabbing it. There we go. Okay, again, you can move these elements around. If you thought that this was too big, you could grab these elements and move them. Additionally, you have some other objects up here. After you've drawn them out, you can lock and unlock a selected area. You can arrange elements. You can push something to the back if you wanted to or bring it forward. You could align. So maybe I'll select these two objects and I'll go up to the align objects and I'll align them to the top. So it does allow you to align objects. Maybe I'll grab this element, this element, this element. Again, I'm holding down my shift key to grab all of these. Selecting through them and holding my shift key, I'm going to go to the align and align them all to the left. So I actually must have done that pretty well because I didn't see a shift. It did align them. Maybe I'll put a little image here, draw it out, and make it an image. Okay. When you're done with it, you can come up here and you can save it. It is saved. If you want a new page, you come up to here and add a new page. You could name it maybe contact. And you can start another design. But first you have to select what you want it to be. Click back on here to get rid of that interface. Again, you could come in here and start drawing out elements, deciding what they are. Okay, I'm not going to complete this one. I'm going to actually show you how you can go back and edit your other page. So if I go back here, I can go back to the home page and I could make some adjustments. I have to click back here to get rid of that. And maybe I need a logo. So I'm going to move these elements. So I'm going to select this one, hold down my shift key and move it down. Maybe I'll put a little logo up here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out a rectangle, make it a box. And I want it to be a logo. And so what I'm going to do is I need some text on it. So I'm going to pull out another rectangle and make that text. And I'm going to type out logo. I'm going to move that element. I'm just going to select it. And I'm going to move it right here. So that's going to be the logo of my website. Let me shift that up a little bit. Okay, now again, you can save it. 
uh, I want to adjust this a little bit. I want to move it over. I can use my arrow keys to move elements over. Uh, the text, you can change the text. You could change the size of the text if you wanted to. You could make it bold if you wanted to, italic, and so forth. I'll go ahead and just change this text to footer. And I can change the alignment of the text to center. All right, now when you're completely done and you're happy with your wireframe, you can come up here and you can export. And you can export it as a PDF or PNG, but you do want a PNG. And I'm gonna go ahead and select PNG and I can include the device template include the hidden pages. I'm just going to select them all and I could do current page or all pages. I didn't really do my second page, so I'm just going to say current page for right now and I can export. It is exporting it. It has downloaded it onto my desktop and what I'm going to want to do is place this in my image folder. So Here's my Art116 folder. Here is my wireframe. I am going to open up Art116. I'm going to navigate to my named folder and I'm going to place my wireframe in my image folder. Again, then you would want to come back and you would want to complete your second page, which I will not do for this demo. Okay, I did want to go over some of the other settings. If you click here, again, you get the settings. And all I really did was I changed the width and the height. But what you could do is change kind of the background. Right now it's set at show grid, graph paper, but I could change it to dots if I wanted to. I don't even need to show the grid if I don't want to. I could also show the background as columns. I could enable snap to grid if I wanted, if I had the grid on. I'll change this back to graph paper and then you could actually use the grid to align your out items. Okay, I'm going to go back to the settings. Additionally, you could change the stroke color. Okay, you could change the width of the stroke that you're drawing out. You could change from the default orange, which I had originally, to one of the other shades here. So if I select this one, come in here and draw an element make it a box, it changes that color. Again, I had adjusted the stroke, you get rid of that. And that's pretty much all the settings that you have the ability to change. Okay.